According to the Newton law of cooling, you know that the rate of heat transfer from a surface to surrounding medium can be explained by this equation. So you can see that the rate of heat transfer in this condition is dependent on the heat transfer coefficient, convection heat transfer coefficient surface area of the heat transfer and the temperature of the surface object and t infinity is the uh, temperature of the medium around the surface so we usually are interested to increase the uh, rate of heat transfer from the surfaces especially when we have a hot surface and we are interested to cool it down we have two options to increase rate of heat transfer by convection when ts and t infinity the temperature at the surface and the temperature of the medium around that surface are fixed we have two options to increase the rate of transfer from that surface to environment or vice versa one, we can increase the convection heat transfer coefficient or H by which may require installation of pump, which may require to install a pump or a fan or add a larger size of the fan to increase the convection heat transfer coefficient. But usually it is not uh, enough to increase the rate of heat transfer by convection. So we have another option that is increase the surface area of the heat transfer or AS by attaching to the surface extended surfaces which we call this uh, we call these surfaces fins which usually are made from highly conductive materials such as aluminium because we are interested to increase the uh, rate of heat transfer so we usually use the highly conductive material some example of the uh, application of fins are the fins of car radiator which greatly increase the rate of heat transfer from the hot water which comes from the engine to the air now let's uh, consider heat transfer through uh, typical fins to see how uh, with the thermal energy uh, flow, how is thermal energy flow in the fins? Imagine a typical fins like this, so like what uh, like what you can see in this figure. Let us uh, choose the element of these fins with the thickness of uh, delta x, which is in the distance of x from the uh, reference from the base of the fin and you can see for this element we have conduction through the fin and also we have convection at the surface of these uh, uh, these elements the characteristic the characteristic of this volume elements or geometry of the geometries of this volume element are the uh, length is delta x cross sectional area of that is AC which we have conduction through this AC and the perimeter of this element is P perimeter means the uh, perimeter for this uh, part of the element so as you can guess from the figure and by the assumption of a steady state condition we can write this uh, equation that rate of heat conduction into the element x this q dot conduction to the element of the x is equal to rate of heat conduction from the element at x plus delta x this one plus rate of heat convection from the element so 
according to the this uh, heat balance for the element of X, we know that the heat transfer, uh, the rate of heat transfer or heat transfer comes from the conduction through the fins body. At the element X, will uh, be converted to to other form or will continue in the conduction form and also convection form of heat transfer. So we have uh, Q dot conduction to the X element and Q dot convection and Q dot conduction at X plus delta X conduction out of the element X element. Then we can rewrite this equation like this Q dot conduction to X equal to Q dot conduction at X plus delta X plus Q dot convection. This equal to these two. Then as you can, as you may know from the previous session, the rate of heat transfer by convection for X element can be written like this. H is the uh, convection uh, heat transfer rate uh, convection heat transfer coefficient of the medium around this thing p delta x is the surface area of this uh, heat transfer the top of this element as you can see here and uh, t is the temperature at the surface of the element x T infinity is the temperature of the medium around these things. Then by substitution of this rate of heat convection from the element in the previous equation, you will get this equation by some rearrangement. We will have this that Q dot conduction or rate of heat conduction from the element at X plus delta X minus rate of heat conduction into the element at X divided by delta x plus hp times t minus t infinity equal to zero. This is only a result of substitution of this uh, equation in the previous one. And rearrangement of this equation, we will have this equation. Then when the delta x or the element thickness approach to zero for very very small uh, thickness of the elements we can rewrite this equation by differential equation so dq that uh, conduction divided by dx plus hpt minus t infinity will be equal to zero so this part can be rewrite rewritten as a differential equation no we should find the general answer uh, for uh, this differential equation. Okay, so now we have it, this differential equation, but as you may know, the conductive uh, heat transfer, rate of conductive uh, conduction, rate of heat conduction um, in the element can be written like this, which comes from the uh, uh, Fourier law of the conduction, heat conduction. We can write this negative K A C D T. This K is thermal conductivity of thin. Uh, A C is the surface area of uh, of uh, heat transfer by conduction. D T D X is the gradient of the temperature in x direction. We can substitute this uh, Q dot conduction of or rate of heat conduction. In the previous equation, the dx instead of q dot conduction, we can write kac dt dx or negative ka dt dx, and by multiplying this to negative to minus, this uh, plus sign will be negative sign. The other part of the equation is similar to the previous one will be equal to zero. Now let's choose the this part HP divided by KAC as M2. Then we can write this equation, which is the rate of heat transfer 
through the X element by conduction and convection, like M2 is equal to HP divided by KAC. If you subtract, if you rearrange this equation and uh, uh, substitute this part HP divided by KAC by M2, we will get these uh second order differential equation d2 theta by dx2 minus m2 theta equal to zero where theta is t minus t infinitive or temperature or we call that temperature excess the temperature difference between the surface and medium around the surface then as you as you may know from the previous chapter to find the general solution for for that equation we should integrate that equation two times then we will get this general solution for that differential equation which is like this the type is equal to c1 e power mx plus c2 e power negative mx which c1 and c2 are the coefficient for this uh, general answer for the differential equation now we should find this c1 and c2 according to boundary condition for the thing that these boundary condition actually are at the uh, fin base and at the fin tip the the bound the first boundary condition is at the fin base is at the x equal to zero we have theta b theta b means t b minus infinity in other words temperature at the base minus temperature at for the medium surrounding the fin this is our first boundary condition now let's see how we can calculate this uh, constant in the differential equation by using the boundary condition at uh, different places of the fins for the base of the fins as you can see in this figure or at x equal to zero theta zero is equal to theta b in other words the theta or temperature exists at the base of the fin is equal to temperature of the base minus temperature of the surrounding this is our first boundary condition let's see what are the other uh, boundary condition which are which can be in different uh, condition the, the other boundary condition is related to the end of the, the or the tip of the fins which can have a specified temperature or negligible heat loss or uh, convection or uh, convection and radiation so the let's start with the first boundary condition that imagine we have an infinitely long fin so in that case the temperature at the fin tips will be equal to the temperature of the surrounding in other words under a steady condition heat transfer from the exposed surface of the fin is equal to heat conduction to the fin at the base all of the heat which comes to the base of the fin will goes to the surrounding by the convection transfer of the fin surface so in this case theta l or temperature excess at the tip of the fin will be equal to the temperature difference between the tip of the fin and surrounding which is zero as i told you because the temperature of the fin tips and surrounding are equal and when the L or length of the fin is uh, long enough or infinitely long. So by this boundary condition we can find uh, 
this equation for the variation of temperature along the feed. Let's see how we can find this uh, variation of temperature along the feed. Okay, imagine uh, this is uh, our fin. In a flank or L equal to infinity or approach to infinity. The boundary condition for this condition, we had our general our general equation for the tip temperature is theta x equal to c1 e power mx plus c2 e power minus mx and we have tb here and t infinity round so let's uh, see how can be uh, now we are going to calculate c1 and c2 okay uh, when we have theta l or temperature excess at l we can write c1 e power m l plus c2 e power negative m l but as you may guess we cannot have this term because as i said before l is approaching to infinite uh, value so we cannot have this and uh, this cannot satisfy this uh, equation so only we will have only we can have uh, this c2 so let's see how we can find this c2 according to second boundary condition or in other words the first one theta zero is equal to our temperature at the base theta zero is uh, theta b is equal to tb minus t infinity and also from the general equation we can write the theta zero or theta b is equal to c1 e power uh, 0 plus c2 e power negative m time 0 but again here uh, as I said mm, in the previous boundary condition when the we are we can see there the temperature exists for the tip of the fins we cannot have this uh, c1 and here as you can see e power this value it will be zero so it will be c2 e power zero and e power zero as you may know will be one so is c2 so theta b will be equal to c2 then let's uh, go back to our general equation was theta x equal to c1 e power uh, mx plus c2 e power negative mx now we cannot have c1 
cut off the condition I told you and C2 is uh, theta B so we will have theta X C2 is theta B power minus X so by this way we found the value for the we found the uh, we found the solution for the general equation now by rearrangement of this equation we can write theta x divided by theta b equal to e power minus x by substitution for theta x and theta b as you may remember we can write like this is what temperature excess minus t infinity divided by tb minus t infinity and substitution of the value of the m if you remember minus m was the net is negative x m radical h p by k a c then by again by rearrangement of this equation we will have this general equation for the change of the temperature along the fin then according to the uh, our assumption that all the conductive temperature to the fin will be uh, equal to rate of uh, heat transfer by convection from the tip to surrounding uh, we can find the all rate of heat transfer by conduction in the fin by Fourier law of conduction we can write like this dx dt at x equal to zero then by substitution of dx dt we should uh, perform deriv uh, derivation we should write derivatives for the both side of this equality then we will have this equation for the TAB minus T infinity Okay, now, uh, now we know how to calculate how we found this equation for the variation of the temperature along the fin. And also we have seen, uh, we had, uh, seen the steady rate of heat transfer from the entire fin, this equation. Now let's uh, see the other boundary condition and uh, let's see how we can uh use that boundary condition to find the change in the change of the temperature along the fin first we should know that the fins are not likely to be so long so their temperature approach the surrounding temperature at tip so our assumption the first assumption we say we say that we said that uh, we can imagine a uh, Infin infinitely long fin but 
we usually don't have such a kind of the things to have uh, infinitely long. So, a more realistic assumption is for a transfer from the T fin tip to be negligible, since the surface area of the fin tip is usually a negligible fraction of the total fin area. In other words, the heat transfer from the tips of the fins are usually negligible because of the very small uh, surface area of the fin tips. So we now have another boundary condition at fin tips that the temperature excess at the fin tips or x equal to L will be zero. In other words, T at L minus T infinity is zero. We don't have temperature uh, transfer from the tip of the fin. Then, with the uh, same procedure, we can find the this like previous uh, general equation. We can find this equation for the variation of temperature along the fin. T x minus t infinity divided by T b minus t infinity will be equal to cosine hyperbolic m l minus x divided by cosine h of m l. This equation is the variation of temperature along the fin in this condition, negligible heat loss from the fin tip with this imagination. And heat transfer from the entire fin, like previous uh, boundary condition, infinitely long, we, for adiabatic fin tips, we can Again, use the Fourier conductive uh, heat transfer uh, laws of Fourier and find this heat transfer from the entire fin. Again, uh, square root of the HP KAC times TB minus T infinity times tangent hyperbolic of ML. The third boundary condition that we are going to consider is a specified temperature in this case the temperature at the end of the fin or the fin tips is fixed at a specified temperature or tl we can assume that the fin tip has a temperature like tl so in this case could be considered as a generalization of the case of infinitely long fin where the fin tip temperature was fixed at T infinity. So boundary condition at fin tip for this case can be written like this theta L or temperature excess at L equal to theta L equal to T L minus T infinity temperature at the tip minus temperature of the medium surrounding the fins. So by this uh, boundary condition if we go and solve those two general differential equation we can find this specified fin uh, temperature find this equation for uh, this condition according to this uh, equation we can find the rate of heat transfer when we have a specified temperature at the fin tips the fourth uh, boundary condition is the actually the most real condition that we imagine that we assume that we have a conviction from the fin what we have in, uh, what we have um, in real condition then the fin tips in practice are exposed to the surrounding so the proper boundary condition for the fin tips is convection that may also include the effects of radiation, the most the realistic condition. Consider the case of convection only at tip. The condition at the fin tip can be obtained from an energy balance at the tip fin. In other words, the heat transfer by conduction to the tips will be equal to a rate of heat transfer by convection from the tip by substitution the value for this uh, two 
type of the it transfer Fourier law and Newton's law for the connotative transfer boundary condition and uh, manipulation of that uh, general equation for the heat transfer through the fin you can find this uh, general equation for the temperature at the temperature of the fin we, we can use the Fourier law Fourier law of the heat transfer and imagine that all of the heat which is transferred by conduction to the base of the fin is transferred to the fin by uh, conduction at x equal to zero we can write this equation by substitution of dt dx like the first boundary condition that i show you but the solution to general fin equation which we found uh, in previous slide is uh, almost uh, complex and it's not easy to use so we uh, we can ma make an approximation which is still uh, practical and it uh, does not make uh, too much error for our calculation so in we can uh, account the loss from the fin tips is to be replaced the fin length L in the relation for the insulated tip case by corrected fin length defined as like this that the corrected fin length or LC is equal to L or the uh, actual length of the fin plus AC by P which AC is the uh, surface area of the convection transfer and P is the perimeter of the uh, fin so the corrected fin length LC is defined such that it transfers from a fin of length LC which insulated tip will uh, be equal to the heat transfer from the actual fin of length L with convection at fin tip this LC or corrected fin length for the rectangular fin will be equal to L plus T by 2 which T is the thickness of the fin and for the cylindrical fin it will be equal to L plus D divided by 4 which D is the diameter of fin. In, con in conclusion according to the previous slide according to the fourth boundary condition we imagine we have convection at the tip of the fin but it is not that much easy to calculate the this convection as you can see in this uh, equation for the convection heat transfer from the tip of the fin so we can imagine we have an extra length of the uh, fins with a heat transfer and an insulated tip fin. So instead of considering the uh, convection heat transfer from tip fin, we can uh, imagine we have a imaginary length of the fin, as you can see here, uh, to be substituted uh, to the convection from tip of the fin instead of the convection from tip of the fin uh, we can calculate the convection from the uh, fin not the tip of the fin so this new length will be lc but the uh, still all the total heat transfer from the fin is uh, same only changes is the place of the convection heat transfer instead of tip it will be in the body of the fin this new length which is a combination between the previous length and the new uh, length substituted to the due to the convection heat transfer is LC or corrected fin length so corrected fin, uh, fin length is generally like this LC equal to L plus AC by P P is perimeter 
uh, perimeter of the fin and AC is the surface area of the heat uh, transfer so for the rectangular fin will be like this with the thickness of T and for cylindrical fin this uh, corrected fin length is this much the other characteristic about the uh, fins is their efficiency actually we are interested to have maximum rate of heat transfer through the fin to to send out all of the heat from the object or the uh, material so we can imagine we have zero thermal resistance or infinite thermal conductivity then T fin will be TB the temperature at the fin will be temperature at the base of the fin in other words we can imagine that we have a fin without any thermal resistance then or infinite thermal conductivity then this is the an ideal fin and in real uh, in condition or real world we don't have such a kind of the fin with uh, zero thermal resistance but we can imagine we have this this is ideal fin uh, then the rate of heat transfer for this fin will be maximum rate of the heat transfer and we can write this equation for this uh, ideal uh, fin which is equal to q dot fin maximum rate of heat transfer is equal to h uh, a fin or area of heat transfer of the fin times tb minus t infinitive newton law for the convection but actually we don't have such a kind of the fin usually we have a drop in the temperature in the fin from the base toward the tip of the fin so the actual temperature distribution along a fin is be something like this the drop in the temperature from the base to the tip of the fin so the rate of heat transfer for actual fin will be lower than the uh, rate of heat transfer for ideal fin the result of uh, division of the actual heat transfer rate from the fin to the ideal heat transfer rate from the fin will be the fin efficiency now let's calculate this efficiency for different uh, boundary condition which we had in previous slide so for the thermal efficiency of long fin if you remember the long fin the result will be something like this one divided by m l and you remember the definition of the m l in previous slide or one divided by l square root of the k a c by h p for adiabatic tip the other boundary condition for the tip also we can calculate the <coughs> we can calculate the fin efficiency for this uh, boundary condition it will be equal to tangent hyperbolic ml by ml the fin efficiency is dependent on the uh, configuration of the fin as well as you can see in this figure the fin efficiency the vertical uh, axis you can see that fin efficiency for the uh, parabolic and rectangular fins are is, are higher than the uh, efficiency of the straight fins of rectangular uh, shape so the most important thing to use fins is uh, their efficiency but usually when you increase the length of the when you increase the length of the uh, fin its uh, efficiency will increase but it is not uh, reasonable to increase the length of the fin
thing too much because it will increase the cost price and also it will uh, increase the friction between the fluid which is uh, going to uh, flow between the fins so usually uh, the fins with lower than 60 percent efficiency is not uh, appropriate and most of the most of the fin which are commonly being used uh, has a efficiency more than 90 percent you can see the efficiency the uh, the efficiency for different uh, configuration or geometry of the fin and in the uh, example we will see how we can use this uh, the information in this uh, table to calculate the fin efficiency or the links or other characteristic of the fins to have the appropriate fin efficiency also the pin fins of triangular profile this profile which is supposed to be used for heat transfer pin fins of parabolic profile and pin fins of parabolic uh, profile blunt with blunt tip the other characteristics which is important when you we are going to use fin uh, to for a transfer or for to cool down uh, something is their effectiveness after calculation of the thermal efficiency of the fins we should see if our fin can be used effectively to increase the rate of heat transfer from the object or uh, from the for our purpose so we should cal uh, we should calculate the rate of uh, heat transfer when we have fin and divide that to the uh, it transfer it from the surface of area of AB when we don't have fin as you can see in this figure we have we still have a uh, hit convection heat transfer from the surface when uh, we don't have any kind of fin but when we have we when we add fin to the surface the conductive heat transfer will go, uh, comes to the body of the fin then will goes to the surrounding by convection we should see if adding of this fin to that uh, surface will effectively increase the uh, rate of heat transfer or not so we should write this equation and epsilon fin or fin effectiveness equal to q dot fin heat transfer rate from the fin when we don't have any fin uh, we, when we have fin uh, Q dot fin heat transfer rate from the fin when we uh, have fin and Q dot no fin uh, heat transfer from the surface area of the AB when we don't have any fin so Q dot we should divide Q dot fin by uh, heat transfer from the surface area of AB according to the uh, Newton law for convection heat transfer you know that how much is the convection heat transfer from the AB surface area to the um, surrounding so HAB times TB minus T infinity here H is convective transfer of the medium around the surface AB is the surface of area of heat transfer TB is temperature of the surface T infinity is the temperature of the surrounding by using uh, all efficiency of the fin we can rewrite this equation like this by simplification and crossing out the similar terms we can we will reach this term so for long fin the fin effectiveness will be equal to this value kp divided by hac so from this equation we can conclude that the thermal conductivity k of the fin material should be as high as possible to have the maximum fin effectiveness so
So we usually use the material with uh, high thermal conductivity like aluminum, copper or iron as fin to increase the fin effectiveness. Also, the ratio of the perimeter to the cross-sectional area of the fin, P by AC, should be as high as possible to increase the fin effectiveness. This should be increased. Moreover, we should decrease the convection heat transfer coefficient. Low convection heat transfer coefficient will increase the fin effectiveness. So we should place fins on the gas or air side. The other important thing about the fin is to choose the proper length of the fin. As you can see in this figure as well, due to gradual temperature drop along a fin, as you can see here, the region near the tip makes little or no contribution to heat transfer. In other words, we don't have uh, this uh, for the long fins, the tip of the fin is usually useless. We don't have any heat transfer in this part of the fin for long fin. So we should choose appropriate length of the fin. Usually, and we can use this relationship to find the appropriate length of the fin. Uh, as you can see in this uh, table, the um, heat transfer from the fin, uh, we can use this relationship, the variation of heat transfer from a fin relative to the uh, that from an infinitive line fit, which is equal to tangent hyperbolic of ML. And we have decided already M. And so it is also dependent on L or length of the fin. And you can see here relationship between the ML and the tangent hyperbolic of ML. And as you can see here, by increasing of the ML or increase in the length of the fin, the ML will be equal to 5 when we have an infinitely long fin but it is not reasonable to have a, uh, this mm, kind of uh, fin with infinitely long uh, fin so usually we are going to have a ml equal to one which will give us the uh, appropriate heat transfer and also it will compromise between the heat transfer performance and the fin size so we usually interested to have ml equal to one an actual example of using fin is uh, uh, using our fins for heat sinks. They are especially designed fin surfaces uh, which are commonly used to cooling off electronic devices and involve of a kind of complex geometry as you can see here. And uh, to consider to choose this kind of heat sinks, we should see the thermal resistance of these heat sinks. Mm, lower thermal resistance means that their performance to cooling the electronic devices is better. So a small value of thermal resistance indicates a small temperature drop across the heat sinks and so it means a high fin efficiency. So to choose heat sink for electric electronic device we should choose the fin with lower uh, lowest thermal resistance.